In today's broadcast, we will focus on a topic that has recently garnered significant attention, the proposed supply of weapons to Russia and Ukraine by foreign nations. This development could have a significant impact on the ongoing conflict in the region and the balance of power between the two nations. Our team of dedicated journalists has been closely following this story, and we have gathered exclusive insights and analysis from top experts in this field. Canada to transfer impounded Russian N-124 to Ukraine Canada is getting ready to hand over a Russian Antonov N-124 Ruslan heavy cargo plane, which was seized earlier, to Ukraine. The aircraft belonged to Russia's Volgodnepr Airlines and was grounded by Canadian authorities in February 2022, right after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The seizure of the N-124 was possible because Canada had closed its airspace to Russian planes due to the invasion. Since then, the plane has been impounded at Toronto Pearson International Airport. Recently, the Canadian government put Volgodnepr Group and Volgodnepr Airlines on its list of sanctioned Russian entities, which allows Canada to confiscate and redistribute their assets. The decision to transfer the aircraft to Ukraine was made after Ukraine's Prime Minister, Denis Shmigal, visited both Washington, D.C. and Ottawa. In a Facebook post, Shmihal announced that Canada is preparing to confiscate the M124 and other assets of the aggressor in Canada and transfer them to the benefit of Ukraine. Against 120 legal and physical persons, including the representatives of Rosatoma, introduced also sanctions USA, the post continued. Established in 1990 and headquartered in Ulyanovsk, Russia, Volgodnepr Airlines is a Russian cargo airline that specializes in the transportation of oversized and heavy cargo. The company operates a fleet of Antonov N-124 and Ilyashin IL-76 aircraft that are designed specifically for heavy cargo operations. Additionally, the company's subsidiary, Airbridge Cargo, utilizes Boeing 747 freighters for cargo operations. Volgodnepr Airlines has successfully executed several notable transportation projects, including delivering satellites, aircraft engines, and even a 124-ton oil rig from Germany to Siberia. The airline has also contributed to humanitarian relief efforts by transporting cargo to disaster zones globally. Moreover, the company provides charter passenger services to governments, VIPs, and corporate clients besides their cargo operations. Volgodnepr Airlines has been recognized with various industry awards, including the Air Cargo Industry Achievement Award, which it has received multiple times. Volgodnepr Airlines is a member of the International Air Transport Association, IATA, and the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. The Ukrainian company Antonov designed and manufactured the Antonov N-124, a strategic airlift cargo aircraft that is one of the largest military transport planes globally and is also used for commercial cargo transportation. The N-124, which can transport up to 150 tons of cargo over 4,000 miles without refueling, was first developed in the 1980s to meet the transport needs of the Soviet military. It has a maximum takeoff weight of over 400 tons and can reach speeds of around 530 miles per hour thanks to its four turbofan engines. One of the distinctive features of the N124 is its unique design, featuring a large hinged nose door and a rear cargo ramp that can be opened in flight for the delivery of cargo. Additionally, the cargo hold is over 100 feet long, over 20 feet wide, and over 14 feet tall, making it capable of carrying bulky and oversized cargo. The M124 has been utilized for various military and civilian purposes, such as heavy equipment transportation, humanitarian aid delivery, and even space rocket transport. It has also been utilized for firefighting operations and atmospheric and climate studies research. Volgodnepr Airlines considers the Antonov N-124 to be a crucial aircraft asset. Pentagon leaks, the Russians attack Musk's satellite communications in Ukraine with Tobol-1. According to a classified U.S. intelligence report obtained by the Washington Post, Russia's attempt to disrupt Ukrainian forces' internet access by targeting Starlink satellite communications provided by Elon Musk's SpaceX appears to be more advanced than previously thought. The report, 
dated March and marked as top secret, reveals that Moscow has been experimenting with its Tobol electronic warfare systems for months to interfere with Starlink communications in Ukraine. Although the report does not confirm if the attempts were successful, it is concerning since it suggests that a program designed to safeguard Kremlin satellites could be leveraged to attack Russia's adversaries. SpaceX declined to comment on the matter, while the Pentagon did not respond to questions about the leaked data. However, Major Charlie Dietz, a Defense Department spokesman, stated that these systems are a crucial layer in Ukraine's communications network, and the focus remains on providing the satellite capabilities required by Ukrainians. Konstantin Zura, a spokesperson for Ukraine's Defense Ministry, acknowledged that Kyiv authorities were aware of Russia's efforts to disrupt Starlink satellite communications and were taking measures to counter them. The Russian embassy in Washington did not respond to a request for comment, according to the Washington Post. Ukraine's military relies on Starlink's small portable terminals to communicate and transmit intelligence, and it has been instrumental in the battlefield. While Russian forces have had success in blocking other communication equipment such as radios and cell phones, satellite signals are more challenging to disrupt. Last year, Elon Musk faced criticism from Ukrainian leaders after unveiling a plan to end the war that critics viewed as too favorable to Russia. Later, when he threatened to stop funding Starlink, he received further backlash. The reaction prompted Musk to reverse course quickly. It remains uncertain whether the Starlink outages reported in Ukraine were caused by Russia's towball experiments or other jamming capabilities such as the Tirada 2 system mounted on trucks used by Russian forces. Ukrainian troops encountered disruptions in October as they advanced towards Russian positions during successful counteroffensives in the south and east. Ukrainian officials then suggested that SpaceX had limited internet access in those regions to prevent Russians from using the service. Analysts have identified seven Tobol complexes in Russia, all located next to facilities tracking space security and sustainability satellites. Experts at the Secure World Foundation believe that satellite interference can occur in two ways, in space, by targeting satellites directly, and on the ground, where anti-radar weapons can be aimed at the receivers. Bart Hendricks, a researcher who closely monitors the Tobol program, believes that Tobol works by distorting the original broadcast by mixing it with the signal from the satellite. The terrestrial method, known as downlink jamming, involves transmitting a signal on the same frequency as the satellite, which blocks devices connected to the original signal. This method has a shorter range since the jammer must be relatively close to the systems it aims to disrupt. Elon Musk stated last year that a software patch helped overcome interference at the Starlink terminal. It is unclear if this is a reference to downlink jamming. However, Towball is designed to disrupt the signal itself on its way to the terminal. The leaked document discusses Russia's ongoing military operational experiment to target the Starlink satellite communications system over Ukraine with Russia's Towball 1. It identifies three locations in Russia where the tests took place, with attempts most intense near Bakhmut, where the heaviest fighting in the Russian-Ukrainian war took place. According to a U.S. intelligence assessment, the Tobol experiment began in late September and was scheduled to last 25 days, but by the time the leaked document was created for senior U.S. officials, more than five months had passed since testing began. The briefing slide did not explain why the experiment lasted so long, if Russia encountered any issues, or if the operation had the intended effect. Although the positioning of Tobol complexes in Russia may suggest they are intended for defensive purposes, the three sites disclosed in the U.S. intelligence assessment, one near Moscow, another near Crimea, and the third in the western Russian exclave of Kaliningrad are the closest facilities to Ukraine, making them suitable for an attack. According to Brian Whedon, Director of Program Planning at the Secure World Foundation, their coverage area seems to encompass the entire Ukraine. While Whedon maintains that the Tobol is a defensive system intended to detect attempts to jam or interfere with Russian satellites, the expert warns that it could use those same capabilities to offensively interfere with someone else's satellite if it can counter jamming signals. Write your thoughts in the comments, your opinion is very important to me. Also subscribe if you are ready to be aware of recent military news.